I assume that we can all see it. It's my great pleasure to now welcome our second speaker, Julia Rousseine, who's working at the Universidad Pompeo Fabra in Barcelona. And her presentation will be about remote pacemaker control of chimera states in multi-layer neuronal networks. Julia, please go ahead. Yes, thank you so much, Ralph, for, uh, and Professor Schell for having me in this mini symposium. And my talk is going to be about chimera states. That is a topic that is definitely very popular in this series of conferences. And in particular, I will focus on control of chimera states. So chimera states are one of the most studied uh, types of partial synchronization patterns. And I will just give you some very brief context in the beginning. So they were first discovered in 2002 and defined as the coexistence of coherence and incoherence. And they were found first in networks of non-locally coupled phase oscillators. After that, they, they've been studied in many different uh, scenarios. And uh, in particular, one uh, uh, one aspect that uh, le led the research on chimera state was the search for chimera state in, in a real world system. So like the title uh, of this mini symposium says, uh, many analogies were, were looked for and found uh, between chimera states and, and many phenomena in, in nature and technology. Uh, so as I was saying, this uh, search for chimera states in real world uh, systems um, as, um, as guided the research uh, on this phenomenon. And when one is doing so, uh, there are some problems that arise. And, this, and one of the main problems is that chimera states present different kinds of instabilities in finite size systems, which are the systems that are most relevant for uh, experimental studies. Hence, the, the need to find methods to control chimera states. Um, different methods were, were proposed in, in, in the last uh, decade or so. And uh, we, we also, uh, during my PhD, I also developed a method uh, to control chimera states based on the idea of a pacemaker oscillator. So here briefly, I will explain you the idea of this control mechanism uh, that was published in the reference that uh, you can see here in the bottom. And uh, uh, just for, uh, for, for keeping things simple, I, I will explain it in, in the case of a ring network of phase oscillators of size n. So what we found was that uh, we are able to control chimera states by uh, having one of the oscillators in the system to act as a pacemaker. Uh, in terms of the network topology, so we start with a network of non-locally coupled phase oscillators, which means that each oscillator on a ring is coupled only to some of its nearest neighbor. And then we transform some of uh, the links of one of these oscillators into unidirectional links. So basically we are taking out all the input to, his, to this oscillator that then is uh, oscillating at a, at a constant frequency. Uh, so this is very briefly uh, the idea. The implementation is very simple. Uh, this method is an open loop method, so it doesn't require any feedback from the system and acts only on the connectivity structure of the network. So it leaves untouched the, the parameters of the individual oscillators. And also what we will see uh, later on in the presentation, this, this fact is important, the fact that it only acts on the connectivity because we can then apply it to to networks made up of different nodes, of different uh, that have different dynamics in the nodes. Um, so, uh, in the before arriving at, at the model that uh, will be the center of this of this talk, I will uh, show you um, the results that this control method produces uh, for a for a single layer network of phase oscillators. So we consider a finite, uh, a finite size system, a ring of 35 oscillators. And uh, when oh, it's exactly the model in this previous slide, in slide three. And when we solve this system, starting from uh, random initial conditions, uh, we can have three types of, of solutions that are shown in this slide. This is with no control, okay? So we don't have 
any pacemaker in the network in this case. And the three uh, solutions represented here uh, in these plots in which uh, on the horizontal axis we have time and the spatial index on the vertical axis. These, uh, these three solutions um, are uh, the, the possible solutions that we can obtain. So in the, in the first uh, row, uh, we see a typical, a typical profile of a chimera state. So we see these spatiotemporal patterns in which uh, a, co a highly coherent and uh, incoherent group are coexisting. Uh, the, the coherent part is the part in blue. And also we see the first one of the instabilities of chimera state that we want to control. We see that the groups are not, uh, the position of the groups is not fixed in time, but they drift along the network. Um, in the second row, we see another possible solution obtained for different random initial conditions. And here we see also that a chimera state is formed, that the two groups are drifting, but then we see that this chimera state collapses to the fully synchronous solution that corresponds to the last blue part of the plot. This is the second instability of, of chimera states that we are trying to, to control because chimera states are chaotic transient, which means that they tend to uh, collapse to a stable solution that is in this case, the fully synchronous, uh, the fully synchronous uh, state. And indeed uh, it can also happen as it does in, in the third case that we consider here that the, uh, that the, um, the uh, system directly collapses to the, to the synchronous solution without forming a chimera state. Now we, we will see what happens when we have a pacemaker oscillator in position 18. So we start each line from the same initial conditions and we will see what happens when we have a pacemaker. And here you have it. So the white uh, horizontal line corresponds to the pacemaker maintaining its uh, constant frequency and we see that uh, we have two main effects. So uh, we, the, the position of the incoherent group is now controlled by the pacemaker in the sense that the pacemaker is attracting its center towards it. And this also happens in the, in the second solution that we considered. And also here we are preventing the system to collapse to the synchronous case. So we are maintaining uh, and prolonging the lifetime of the chimera state. And in the, in the third case, we see that, um, we see that uh, also we can uh, generate a chimera state for initial condition that otherwise will give us immediately the, 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 uh, the constant solution. So the synchronized solution, sorry. So these are the main effects that we can obtain with our control mechanism. And, and also it's interesting to see in this third slide that we can obtain the same effects even if we start the pacemaker, if we activate the pacemaker slightly uh, after the, the simulation has started. So uh, also in, in, the, in the context of trying to, to apply uh, the, our theoretical findings of, on chimera states to uh, more realistic situations that can help us uh, to to find them and study them in real world systems. We, uh, we then extended this method that was developed for phase oscillators to more complex network topologies and more complex uh, dynamics. In particular, we uh, applied it to, to multiplex networks of Pitts and Agumo oscillator. And this is work that I have uh, started and developed while I was uh, visiting uh, TU Berlin in, in a couple of years ago and uh, is uh, currently under review uh, in theory. So as I said, uh, in this uh, work, uh, we are trying to combine multiplexing and control and see in which sense we can still uh, control chimera states in uh, parameter regions in which we know that they form in this multiplex setting. So here I'm showing uh, the six uh, configurations that, uh, I, that we have considered in this study. So uh, we can see that in each of these six uh, multi, multiplex networks, we have two rings of oscillators that are non-locally coupled, exactly as the one I showed you in the beginning. But this time the red nodes are Fitzgerald Gummo oscillators. 
And in the first column, we have uh, unidirectional coupling between the layers, while in the second column, we have bidirectional coupling between the layers. So first we will study uh, what happens when there is no control in the system. So just to see that the chimera states are there and, that, and how they, they behave. Uh, secondly, we will consider the case in which there is a pacemaker present in one of the two layers. And this is an interesting configuration in which we can ask the question uh, if we are able to remotely control the chimera states in the second layer via pacemaker only in the first layer. And lastly, uh, in the case of unidirectional coupling, uh, we will see what happens when we have a pacemaker in the second layer, that is the driven layer. So we will see if it is still able to control uh, the position of the chimera state. And for bidirectional coupling, we will see the effects of having two pacemakers that are in conflicting positions. So both of them are trying to, uh, to compete with the, with the interlayer coupling to attract the the incoherent group to their position. So this was just a brief overview. And now um, I will briefly describe the, the measures that we, we use for um, uh, to, to see, to uh, quantify this, uh, the, the effects of controlling the position of the incoherent group. So uh, the methods, the, the, the measures that we use are a measure that we called the control impact that would be indicated with gamma. And this um, basically tells us how much the pacemaker is attracting the center of the incoherent group. Here on the, on the right of the screen, you have a representation of a chimera state and a schematic representation in the bottom of the incoherent group in black and its center in white. Okay, so we, we have an algorithm that gives us the position of the center of the incoherent group during time, and we measure how much it is attracted uh, by the pacemaker that we will put um, almost always in position 25 inside a network of, of 50 oscillators. Then we will consider, um, we will take snapshots of the center of the incoherent group at, uh, at, in the middle of our simulation to see uh, whether uh, it is, we can expect that uh, it is in different positions changing the initial conditions if there is no control. And then we will use, uh, then we will consider measures that take into account the fact that we have two layers. So we want to compare the positions of the chimera states across the layers. And these are the, uh, what we call the alignment of the center of the incoherent group. So we measure the distance between the two centers and then the uh, an interlayer uh, error that tests for synchronization of the entire dynamics, not only the center. Uh, so um, we can now start with the first of our uh, configurations. We consider a two layer network of pizza and gum oscillators with unidirectional coupling between the layers and uh, as we can expect, so we, we chose uh, parameters that are uh, the sigma two, uh, which is the, uh, um, the coupling strength inside the layer two and sigma one two, which is the coupling strength between the two layers. And uh, as, we, uh, as one can expect, we see that uh, the center of the, of the incoherent group uh, doesn't have a preferred position. This is reflected in particular in panels C and D in this, uh, in, in this uh, figure and also in A and B because we see that the control impact has a uniform distribution uh, of values. This means that sometimes uh, the center will be by chance close to the pacemaker position and sometimes it will be far, okay? There is no control. And we also see that the, um, uh, the, um, the dynamics do uh, uh, the two layers uh, synchronize you know, for, for a strong enough uh, coupling strength between the layers. And let's say that this is uh, to be expected and this is just to show what happens when we have no control. So now, once we um, introduce a pacemaker in layer one, uh, of course, there is no communication from layer two to layer one. So layer one is uh, behaving like a single layer network of pizunogum oscillators. And we see that uh, our control mechanism is working and this is reflecting 
is working in a single layer network and this is reflected in panel A in the fact that we see uh, high values of the control impact. Also, um, and it's more interesting in, in the context of this study, we see that um, we see that this control effect is transferred via the coupling to layer two. So in panel B, we see that starting from a coupling strength sigma one, two, that is uh, slightly between uh, 10 to the minus three and 10 to the minus one, uh, we, um, the, the position of the chimera state is also controlled and is centered around uh, the position of the pacemaker in layer one, corresponding to the position of the pacemaker in layer one. This is also reflected in the snapshot of the center that becomes uh, more and more blue corresponding to position 25. And uh, is also, uh, and we can also see here that, uh, of course, this is uh, due to the fact that the dynamics have, have synchronized, so the centers are, uh, are aligned and, uh, and also the error becomes smaller. One interesting thing to notice here is that uh, before the remote control is effective, so before the yellow region in panel B, we have a region, uh, we have a dark uniform region. And this dark uh, uniform region uh, tells us that the center of the incoherent group has its maximal distance from the pacemaker position. So we see an, an unexpected effect of the center of the incoherent groups being, in, being at their maximal uh, distance across layers. And we're still looking into this effect to, to understand why it happens, but we, we checked uh, looking at the solution and it's actually what, uh, what's going on here. So before reaching the remote control, we have sort of a resistance of the system to, to, reach, this, uh, to reach this configuration. Now, uh, when Instead, we have uh, a pacemaker only in layer two, so the driven layer in this case, because we have unidirectional coupling. Uh, what we might ask is whether, uh, is whether um, the, the control of the pacemaker is stronger or weaker than the, the driving effect of the first layer. And what we see is that in, in panel B, you know, panel A is behaving like in the uncontrolled case, but in panel B, we can see that, uh, the, that in the beginning, so for weak interlayer coupling, the, uh, the, the control impact has high values, meaning that the pacemaker is still able to control the position of the chimera state, but then the, the driving effect uh, wins and takes over, and the, uh, this is also reflected by the fact that the, the dynamics are, are tending to, to synchronize, and so the, the driving effect uh, gets stronger. Now, uh, what happens, I will briefly comment on what happens uh, with bidirectional coupling, because in this case, of course, the interplay between the two layers, it makes things a bit more complex. Um, actually, in the uncontrolled case, the first case we consider, uh, the scenario is uh, quite similar to, to what we saw before for unidirectional coupling. Okay, so uh, the chimera state uh, still have no preferred position within each layer, but they tend to synchronize and align across layers. And this is also, uh, of course, to, to be expected. And now we see uh, what happens with, uh, when we have a pacemaker in layer one. Now we start to see differences due to the presence of bidirectional coupling, because before we said that uh, there was, uh, we said that um, the remote control uh, was possible for coupling strong enough. So from some point, the, the first layer is entirely controlling the second one. And here it is not the case. Here what we see is that uh, in panel B, you know, this yellow region is the only region in this parameter space in which we are remotely control the second layer via a pacemaker in the first one. So this is due now to the more complex interplay of the layer in, in this case. And the, uh, meanwhile, the, the synchronization and alignment 
patterns are, are similar to what we saw for the unidirectional case. Finally, uh, I will uh, show you what happens when we have uh, two pacemakers in the layers that are in conflicting positions. So in layer one, in position 25, and in layer two, at, at the antipodal position in, in uh, position 50. And what is interesting here is that um, there, are, there is a region of, of parameters uh, that uh, is the yellow region in panels A and B, in which uh, both pacemakers are still able to control the position of the chimera state. Um, and after this, uh, the, the control uh, is lost uh, again, and, and the, but the, the chimera states align and, and the dynamics are synchronized. And, and also it's worth uh, noticing in panel A that um, we have uh, two uh, disconnected regions in which the, the control by the pacemaker is, is working. Now we have a small, a smaller uh, yellow stripe inside the, the dark region in which also, also the control is working uh, against the, the influence from the second layer. So these were the, the scenarios that we considered in the study and to conclude, uh, the main points that we can uh, extract from, from the simulations that we have done is that, of course, uh, we found a, a way to apply a simple control mechanisms that, that nevertheless can be useful in, in more complex uh, network topologies than the ones that are normally used in, uh, in control studies. And that uh, the remote control, which is important, is possible in some of the settings that we considered and for some parameters, and we are able to uh, identify the regions in which this is possible. Also, we can conclude that uh, if we have a driver response system, the driver uh, in the end becomes stronger. So the, this, gives some, this gives us some limitations of our mechanism. And there are some uh, open questions that we still um, can uh, can lead to some more research on this topic, and this antipodal effect of which I was talking about in the case of unidirectional coupling and a pacemaker in the driver is one of these. And also, of course, one can consider many more combinations of control and multiplexing, and thus obtain different patterns and uh, different scenarios of synchronization and uh, remote control. And with this, uh, I think I'm done, and I would like to thank you for attending this talk. Thank, thank you very much, Julia, for this excellent presentation. Um, we have um, time for uh, one or two uh, questions left. One question has already arrived in the question and answer forum. Julia, I assume that you can see it also, but I read it so that everyone can, uh, can uh, see and hear the question. It comes from um, our colleague Yan So Sang, and he asks um, if there's any implication of your results for controlling epilepsy. Are chimera states desirable or undesirable when it comes to suppressing epilepsy? Um, yes, thank you for this question. So uh, I'm not an expert uh, on epilepsy, but in our group, uh, uh, there are uh, in, in the group where I work, there are uh, uh, some experts on epilepsy, like Ralph. Uh, but what, what I can say about this is that, of course, this is a very theoretical uh, study, but the, there were uh, several works that, um, uh, that um, uh, found analogies between uh, chimera states and uh, epileptic seizures. And uh, uh, what I can also say is that uh, epilepsy is characterized by uh, an abnormal uh, synchronous activity in the brain, to say it in a very uh, simple way. So the presence of chimera states that have a part of coherence and also a part of incoherence may be, I believe, something desirable. So here we are giving a way of maintaining this co coexistence of coherence and incoherence. So, so yeah, maybe this can give some insights in, in ways I, I wouldn't say of controlling epilepsy, but certainly of understanding some mechanisms behind it. Okay, very good. And we have a second question in our forum um, asked by Marius Yamaku. 
-hmm. Julia, I assume that you can see it and I read yes. it for you. Um, first of all, um, thanks for this interesting talk and uh, our colleague has two questions. The first question is, do you think that your control mechanism, which is based on the pacemaker, is robust if there's no one-to-one -one coupling between the oscillators in each layer? So let's start with this first question. Yes, so um, I think that in this case we will have to agree on what uh, controlling means. Um, because, for example, uh, this is something I, I have tried that is not uh, a published work, but something that I have tried. You could consider a two-layer network in which the layers have different sizes and you introduce some mean field coupling. This is something we have done uh, also with Ralph in some other works of synchronization, but we didn't apply control. So what does it mean to control there? You, you can, for example, have a target position for the chimera state in one of the two layers. And I believe there are some combinations of parameters in which you can use control in this sense. But I don't know if maybe one can have a different idea of what it means to control a chimera state in this, in this scenario. But yeah, maybe it can be uh, generalized to this, I believe. Okay, and so the second question of Marius will be the last question for Julia due to time constraints. It is that um, he, he's asking, what is the mathematical form of your unidirectional couplings? Uh, yes, so this means that basically in the equations of each layer, we introduce a term that has a coefficient multiplied by the difference of the corresponding variables of the two layers. Okay, so we have a state variable for oscillator 13, for example, in layer one, and a state variable for oscillator uh, 13 in layer two, and in each, in, in the second layer, we introduce a term that is proportional to the difference of these two variables. So it's a diffusive uh, coupling. This, this can be found in the, in the reference I, I gave uh, here and also hopefully soon in the paper that is under review. Okay, very good. Thank you very much, Julia, again, for your um, you. <laughs> excellent presentation.